What's up, guys? I'm back today. I'll let you know, last time I was planning to get some stuff out in the interwebs regarding the neck and migraines and shoulders and stuff like that. So let's just dive right in. Let's see here. Okay. So we have uh, this image here on the right. Okay. So you can see here, you know, this head right here, eh, that's, that doesn't look very comfortable. We're just going to, we're just going to say, Hey, that does not look very comfortable. That's all we're going to say. Okay. Here on the right, we're going to say, hey, this is where we want to be. Our tongue muscles are nice and strong. Our hyoids, nice and strong. We have good development of the jaw musculature. Uh, notice the positioning of the shoulder blade. Let's talk about this. All right. So you have, you know, migraines. That's something that can occur whenever you have this, this posture here on the left. Gravity's pulling you down. The head's down and forward. The shoulder is in this position here where it's not supporting the neck with the, 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 the neck musculature. So the head has dropped down and forward. Now that makes the chin pop up. Okay. Which, you know, the chin popping up, moving the head into extension opens the jaw. So you see all these mouth breathers out there. You got your sleep apnea, you got your, you know, you got gingivitis, you got bad breath because you're mouth breathing all the time. That ain't good. That's another thing that can occur. That's not actually written here. That was just like a, a tangential thing that I went off on. But I wanted to talk about really commonly pain in the scalp when you brush your hair. Um, that's due to this, this issue here. You can see here on this image here on the left, that's not this one. This, I guess this would be more of the middle skull image. And this is the left skull image. So, And then this would be like the far left, middle. I don't even know how to say it. So you just you'll figure it out. But you see here this ruler, each one of these markers is an inch, okay? So here where it says 1x, 2x, 3x, okay? Normal normal range of motion for that neck, for that head is zero to three centimeters of forward head carriage. Um, every inch you go past that point, the load on the, the muscles of the back of the neck actually doubles, okay? So this guy right here, the, the muscles that run up and down his spine, or gal, hey, skeleton could be a girl, who am I to say? I mean, you know, what? we're not gonna go there. But the muscles on the back of this skeleton's neck, um, they're gonna be very, very tight uh, because they're trying to prevent that, that cranium and that head from falling and smacking on the floor. So they're like, wah, and that's why your chin's going to pop up and your jaw's going to open. You're going to mouth breathe, yada, yada. But what that does to the blood flow through the muscle, the studies show that as little as 10% extra muscular tone in the muscle, whether it's your hammy or, you know, your upper trap or your suboccipitals or your neck extent or whatever, your pec minor, right? As little as 10% extra muscle tone decreases blood flow through that muscle by 50 to 75%, okay? This is a significant statement. It's, 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 if you understand this, you understand why massage is so fantastic. You understand why heat makes you feel better. You understand that when that muscle is in contraction, the blood cannot flow, all right? So, so if, we're, if we have a postural issue because these neck muscles here are too weak, they're deconditioned, which you know just can occur for a variety of reasons, <laughs> we'll get into it. But, but for now, just know if your head is down and forward, if you're, somebody's like, oh, you got forward head posture, or, oh, you've got rounded shoulders, or oh, you know, you've got a reverse cervical curvature, or is it, like you got migraines, or you got vision issues, or jaw pain, TMJ stuff, you are this image on the left. And I have instruments and I can measure you to, to prove to you that is the case, but um, that's a different talk. Now, um, let's see. Yeah, we have a, this is, this is just a busy slide, man. I mean, the implications of the cervical spine being out of position, very far reaching. All right. So we talked about, Hey, you know, reduce blood flow, reduce blood flow to the brain because the head's down and forward and the muscles, uh, on the back of the neck are tight. There's your migraines. There's your ischemia. 
and your hypoxia, uh, which is lack of blood, lack of oxygen to the scalp. And that's why you get that pain in the scalp when you brush your hair. This is really common in women. They have big old heavy hair and their heads down and forward. It, it's not, that's not good. Cause again, every inch that head goes forward, the weight on the neck extensor musculature is doubled, which means it has to work twice as hard <laughs> so that your head doesn't fall off of your, off of your spine, okay? So this, these are significant statements. Now, um, I have written here scoliosis, lat and serratus anterior, basically the nerves that branch out of the bottom of your cervical spine or your neck, they innervate the muscle that pulls and pushes. I think I have another picture here of your serratus anterior, and then we're gonna get into thoracic outlet after that. But um, essentially, if you got this forward head posture thingy, all of this is, all of this is, it's all, it's all, you got to fix it. If you want to fix any of this, you got to fix upper cervical, uh, 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 upper cervical posture. And we're going to get into that. Mouthing occurs with deep core function development from zero to three months. So that's where you actually are supposed to develop these neck muscles um, and the the shoulder blade musculature that holds the alignment of the uh, cervical spine. So there's just like a really brief overview. Let's move on because I don't want to get too into that. So here's your serratus anterior muscle. Again, this muscle is, is innervated or the nerve that talks to it comes out of the bottom of your neck. So if, you, if your neck's all forward, bottom of your neck's all out of place, that nerve is not going to be able to communicate effectively with the nervous system and, and this muscle is not going to be able to do its job and this is the platform this muscle controls that shoulder blade this is like the foundation of of what holds the shoulder blade in place and then the neck is is heavily heavily and i can't i can't i can't overstate how heavily influenced cervical posture is by the shoulder posture okay so the neck sits on the shoulder okay the shoulder comes forward boom neck comes forward and vice versa eh, with a little caveat. But basically, you see these nerves branching out of your neck here. Now, uh, they go under your clavicle. This little pointy, this little sticky pointy thingy here is called your acromion. And that is where another muscle attaches that we're going to get into in a second. But I want you to look into, into the fiber orientation of serratus. You can see 12, it has some fibers that actually elevates your shoulder forward. And then you see here at nine, same sort of thing, elevation. So it's it's the shoulder goes forward, but it doesn't go down, it goes up, okay? That's serratus. And that's that's the key here, because if that shoulder blade gets pulled down, it's actually gonna pinch on these nerves through here. And there's your thoracic outlet, there's your numbness and tingling down your arm. And here's the upper trapezius here, serratus anterior, upper trapezius, they both support um, the posture of the shoulder blade um, and will, they're, they're essential pieces to not just quote unquote strengthen, but to correct, I suppose you could say, uh, but we're gonna move on, okay? We're gonna move on. This is, this is we've got a long presentation here. So we're gonna, we're gonna move on. Just send me a message. If you got any, if you got any questions, just shoot me a message, okay? If you have something going on like this, um, you can imagine we said, hey, the neck sits on the shoulder. If the shoulder's out of place, the neck's out of place. Uh, you've got bulging discs in your neck. If you got the numbness and tingling, you got to fix muscle balance in the tongue and in the mouth, in the neck, and some more stuff too. But let's move on because we're not gonna we're not gonna get too caught up on one particular thing. Now this is pec minor. You can see fiber orientation of pec minor, and this is that little pointy thingy that I pointed out to you in the last slide. Let's see if I can go. Yeah, I can go back. Cool. So you can see this little pointy thingy here. That's where this guy attaches, and then he attaches to ribs three, four, five. But you see the nerves go right under that thingy. Okay, so you see the fiber orientation of serratus, how it lifts your shoulder blade forward. That actually opens up the space for the nerves, so they don't get pinched. This guy actually rounds the shoulder down and forward, and kind of counteracts serratus. So there's a there's a balance between pec minor and serratus. Usually the problem, yeah, the, the pec minor is typically tight when you've got some thoracic outlet symptoms or, you know, you got neck stuff going on, some bulging discs, but the real trick is to restore function to serratus by restoring the muscle balance of the upper quarter. Um, 
and we'll get into like actual tongue posture. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but um, basically to, to fix the neck, to fix thoracic outlet, you got to fix serratus. You got to fix your supraniform for hyoids, your upper trapezius, your, your masseter muscles are important. I mean, just all of this musculature here all around this thyroid, this is all important, important, important <laughs> musculature to, 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 to restore. Um, so pec minor can really throw a wrench in things, gets a really bad rap, but the real problem is not pec minor. It's that cervical spine is out of place and serratus isn't innervated. And so pec minor is taking over and trying to do all the work to provide stability to the shoulder girdle. Okay, that's really what's going on. Then you're getting symptoms because you're deconditioned and your body doesn't work properly because you got this nonsense going on. So anyway, moving along, like I said, we don't want to spend too long. We got, we got plenty to go through here. So the postural system of the neck isn't functioning. Oh no, what are you going to do? You better fix it. Yep, you better fix it. Okay, so what maintains the posture of the neck? You can see all these little muscles here, these little, little, little uh, lines. Uh, you've never took anatomy. You know that's how you denote muscle fiber orientation. Um, another thing we got to talk about the postural system is when the head comes down and forward, the pelvis tips forward and the lower back gets this, this, this really great fun, fun thing going on. Um, and this, this actually leads to your spondylolisthesis where, you know, those vertebrae slide forward. Um, and then you get your pinch, you get your disc tissues and your low back. And, you know, the research shows, I think it's, I don't remember which percentage of the time, but Within five years of a lumbar diagnosis, you end up with a neck diagnosis because this is how it works. When the head comes forward, it changes your center of gravity. Okay, so here's that head coming forward. Ooh, look at that. Oh, man, look at that lower cervical spine. Look at that kink in there. Oh, that doesn't look nice. Oof. You don't want to be that guy. Dowager's hump, migraines, TMJ. Oof, you don't want that. You want to be this guy. Oh, man, look, he's so handsome. Nice jawline. My goodness. Jeez, fantastic. This is where you want to. You can chew your food well. You got a nice smile, your, your jaw doesn't hurt, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Again, just look at the difference here. No es bueno. You look at the nice cervical curvature, cervical alignment. This is that reverse cervical curvature posture that you see. And again, it's this is the pathology that you're dealing with right here. This is it for the upper quarter. It's really simple to fix. But what you got to understand is it's not just a neck problem. It's a pelvis problem, too because you have what we call the craniopelvic connection. As the head comes down and forward, the pelvis tips, and then you have your anterior pelvic tilt. It's like, oh, geez, that's going to compress your low back. So as it's going to take over, it's going to be a real bad time. Um, and it's, again, it's all fixable. But the, I think the, the pelvic correction video, the lower cross correction, anterior pelvic tilt, that's going to be a different video. But I just want you to know, to fix a neck, you got to fix a pelvis. You got to know, you got to do both. You can't just all your stretches and exercises go straight for your neck. It's like, yeah, you got to do that, but you got to fix the deep core. We're going to get to that because remember, the shoulder sits on the rib cage. Okay. Right. So, you know, pelvic and rib cage positioning affects shoulder positioning. And, you know, lumbar is what, you know, is the bony thingy that's between the pelvis and the rib cage. That all has to be functional. And it's not when you got a neck thing. Because again, where the pelvis goes, the head follows and vice versa. Where the head goes, the pelvis and the low back follow. Okay, so remember, it's not just one thing. You got your whole, your whole, your whole sandwich is you need, you need a, a sandwich. You need a chef in there, make you a nice chef sandwich, nice, you know, what, what, what is it? What, the club sandwich? You, you want to make that right. You don't want to just throw some lettuce at it. It's a bacon. You want to make it look all pretty, put the toothpick in there. You know, you, you, you want somebody there who knows what they're doing and isn't just treating you like a head, neck and shoulder because you are also a pelvis. And that is because of gravity. And when one thing happens, another thing happens. Now, you can't fix a head, neck, shoulder without fixing a rib cage. And the thing that stabilizes and positions the rib cage is the same thing that orients the pelvis and the low back, decompresses the low back. Notice that knee hyperextension position when the pelvis tips. Notice there's a nice active leg when you get that tucked pelvis here in white and that's what puts the head back on the shoulder okay so there's actually i think it's a four degree yeah it's a four degree retraction of the cranium um which equates to about six centimeters of retraction whenever you whenever you properly position the pelvis but remember there is actual muscular conditioning that has to occur to properly align the cervical spine um and there's again prop there's muscular conditioning that has to occur to properly um, 
stabilize and orient the lumbar spine and pelvis and rib cage. So uh, muscle balance of the upper quarter works with muscle balance of the pelvis. Now, TVA, pelvic floor, multifidus, and diaphragm, that's all foundational work for the pelvis. That's not the end-all be-all. I released a video on the, uh, what was it? Infant developmental sequence that really, really highlights how, you know, pelvic and rib cage positioning and, 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 and the mouthing phases of development, that happens at zero to three months. So if you have like migraines and you got herniated discs in your spine, that's zero to three months of development. But there are, let's see, yeah, that phase, that phase, that phase, and that phase. There are four more phases of development that allow you to uh, become an upright human, okay? If you just stop at the zero to three phase where you're just conditioning TBA, pelvic floor, spinal muscles, diaphragm, you, you are in essence 20% corrected and you will not, well, I'm sorry, you'll feel better. Like you'll feel better, but you won't be able to be better. Like if that makes sense, if you have any questions about that, send me a message, but uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, so forward flexion activation test is a quick, simple test that you can use to check your deep core, which is developed uh, from zero to three months. Like I just said, it's your TBA, pelvic floor, multifidus and diaphragm. Okay. And then of course, mouthing also occurs from zero to three months, but this is strictly for rib cage positioning, lumbar stability and pelvic stability. Now, remember the head and the pelvis follow each other. So this is how, you know, if you need to, um, focus on the inner core at the pelvis and rib cage. So forward flexion activation test, as you round the spine here, the belly should pull in, just take a finger, put it in your belly button, round over. If your belly doesn't pull in, you got a problem. If your belly pushes out, you got a problem. If your belly doesn't, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, if your belly doesn't pull in, you got a problem. If it pushes out, you got a problem. And if it doesn't do anything, you got a problem. So your belly has to pull in at about 90% lumbar flexion at around 45 degrees. Really, it's when the ligaments of the low back start to get tension, but you're not going to be able to feel that because you don't have palpatory skills. So all you got to do is just feel your belly button. When it pulls in, if it pulls in, and if you have these problems, it probably doesn't. Um, then, then that can be a, 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 that's actually the test that we use to check transverse abdominis function, which is this TBA thing here. Oh man, you get a little, a little highlight of what's going to come what's to come there. Okay. So TBA is the, is the, the muscle that pulls in it. Like it, it makes you skinny. It lifts your organs into place, yada, yada, but it works with the multifidus, the pelvic floor and the diaphragm to provide stability to the rib cage, spine and pelvis. Okay, so it's all in the same neurological reflex loop. When one activates, they all have to turn on provided the system works. Now, if you pass the TVA test, which you might, it's possible. I've had people pass the TVA test. Doesn't mean they're intercourse functional because we also have to check the multifidus. So the multifidus should swell. Um, you put your hands up and down your low back, your fingertips. And when you blow out, like you're blowing out birthday candles. So you lay on your belly, put your fingers up and down your low back, blow out like you're blowing out birthday candles there will be a noticeable swelling of the musculature that runs vertically up and down the spine, the paraspinal musculature, okay? It will get thick and it will swell. And if you don't notice that, that's also an indicator of the deep core needing conditioning, which occurs from zero to three months. So here's the developmental phase. And also have when your teeth start to sprout out because, you know, you go back to the beginning here, you can imagine your teeth are funky and your jaw is funky if you got these problems. So, sorry, it's just the way it is. Um, so zero to three months is your spinal muscle development. Those muscles along your spine that should swell whenever you blow out. Now, remember that test is for the lower back muscles. So when you blow out forcefully, the lower back muscles should swell. Navel radiation is your core, your belly pulling in. And then mouthing is also here um, where you bring things to your mouth or you're breastfeeding or whatever the case may be that actually develops this musculature. It's actually uh, breastfeeding actually activates all of the stabilizers and your deep core that run up and down your spine. Breastfeeding is actually a really important phase of the infant developmental sequence uh, when you're going through it as an infant. It's like super actually really important to so do that. But um, after that, you get into two arm pressing, two leg pulling. I just released another video on infant development. So if you want more information on the sequence, uh, look, uh, the, the video like right before this actually is going to talk way more in depth about all this. So I encourage you if this is like, oh, you're like, oh man, this kind of, I want to learn more about this, check that out. But from three to five months is a two arm push, two leg pull. 
from five to eight months is pushing with your right leg, pushing with your right arm and vice versa. You got to do both. That integrates the upper and the lower body. Um, after this three to five month phase, you start to sit up and you actually sprout these two bottom teeth. If you have an issue with the, the right leg push, right arm push, if you're not able to, if you need more work there, we'll say, you're going to have a scoliosis presentation, you know, hip, a hip hike, a shoulder hike, you're going to be out of balance. Uh, but remember, if you have a scoliosis, you got to look at the preceding phases of development. You got to do that first. You got to, you got to go all the way back and say, where do I need to start? Is my belly pulling in? Because if not, I know I got to start at zero to three months. I have to, you know, I got to, I got to do my whole deep core. I got to do my tongue muscles. I got to, I got to fix my neck and my shoulder. You know, there's, there's a process to it because we developed systematically when we were in our first year of life and good posture uh, just means that your muscles and your spine are in a good position, allowing uh, your nerves to innervate your musculature and for you, those nerves to then create contraction through that musculature so you can generate force, absorb force, so your body can really just function like a body. So I'm gonna grab a sip of delicious. Okay. Um, after the uh, single leg press, single arm press, that's like same time. Um, then you're looking at lunging, pulling, and squatting. And then finally, you're looking at gait. So zero to three months, three to five months, five to eight months, seven to 11 months, 12 months. So if you just meet with a PT and do your muscles that, that uh, you know, they, 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 they go up and down your spine, your bird dogs, right? You know, hip bridges would, would kind of be classified more in this five to eight month phase. Uh, but your your teeth, your belly vacuums, and there's a specific science to all this. So don't think, oh, I'm just going to go do this. You need to talk to a, a professional. Um, I work online. Shoot me a message. Um, you have all these different phases, and they all have to be done correctly. Okay. Um, before, but but I want you to really make this your take home. Before you ever pull anything, before you ever lift your hips off the ground like you're doing a squat, or before you lunge, this stuff needs to be fixed. Okay at least needs to be addressed, needs to have some headway made. Otherwise, you your joints are going to be way out of place. Your posture is going to be whacked up. You're going to expose your joints to ex excessive compression, torsion, and shear forces. It's going to wear out your joints. It's going to be a bad time. Uh, and definitely do not go take up running. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. You, you have to earn that. <laughs> you, you, you have to earn the ability to run without pain. That requires... Remember, you as an infant, you literally develop all day, every single day. All of your waking hours are, are literally all aimed at developing your muscular system for an entire year, okay? And that gives you the ability to walk, all right? So don't, don't go jumping into running when you have all these problems, when you have, you know, your, your neck's out of place, you have all these, your core's not working. Don't go do all that, man. You're going to get hurt, Okay. If you look like one of these guys, if you look like that guy right here in the middle, I, you can't see here. Let me do it with the mouse. If you look like that guy, do not run. Don't do that. You're going to get hurt. You probably already know that if you look like that. But uh, spinal engine, I have another video about that. But basically, your body has sling systems that work together to produce movement. Okay. So the rib cage torsions and the pelvis counter torsions. And that pulls on the femur and, and, and it allows you to, like, you can see this toe off phase of gait. And I'll be honest, I didn't mean to leave this slide in here because I wasn't going to get into this, but I will. If you look at the shoulder here, you can see this shoulder's forward, this shoulder's backwards. And we said, you know, don't ever start pulling anything until, until you've spent time in these prior phases of development, right? Seven to 11 months is where you start to pull, okay? And you can see just walking around, you have to swing your arms, okay? And part of that's pulling. So you can see how, you know, you need to go through the whole thing. But with that being said, uh, we're still going to talk about it briefly, just because I have a few minutes. Um, this, this muscle here, the serratus anterior, that's what activates. The arm comes up. It shrugs a little bit. The arm comes forward. And you feel contraction through this musculature when your arm swings through. OK, it's not showing it here. It's showing the external oblique because the fibers of this muscle down here at 13 are actually continuous. So the lower slips are with the external oblique here and, and here. And these fibers actually cross to the midline. You can't see it on this image. And they're continuous with the internal oblique fibers over here. 
And you can look at the fiber orientation of the contralateral adductor here. So basically, after you've done all this, it sets you up so you can walk around. You know, again, this is that's why we don't want you running and jogging and, run and all that stuff if you're having other other issues. OK, but when the left arm comes forward, you get the obliques and the groin to, the groin is going to bring that leg forward. You're going to be pressing off of the this is the toe off phase of the left leg stance phase of the right leg. And you can see the arms are rotating provided this whole system is functional. Okay, remember this all happens at zero to three months, zero to five really, but um, yeah. So scoliosis, totally normal. Uh, that's just how the spine moves as a unit. The hip hikes, the opposite shoulder hikes and the head side bends into that shoulder hike, okay? That's how it works. That's how, that's called the spinal engine. That's how you walk, that's how it goes. Now that's gonna be a problem. Somebody's like, oh, you have scoliosis. That's because you're stuck there because you don't have a balanced body because you, you, you went and you ran before you were ready to walk and run, okay? You, you went and you did it anyway when I told you not to do it. So don't do that. You, you have to develop properly so you don't wind up like this dude on the right 24 seven. It's normal to go in and out of that as you walk. Notice my left arm swings forward, my left shoulder shrugs. But if I'm just measuring your spine and your pelvis, you should be level. You should be within four to six degrees if you're a guy at your pelvis, seven to 10 if you're a girl. Your lumbar should measure certain, your thoracic should measure certain, and your neck should measure certain, okay? And anybody who tells you that's not the case, they're just wrong, I'm sorry. Now, this is how it works. So remember, do not, do not, or do, if you wanna be like this guy and just in tremendous amounts of pain. I mean, look at, look at the positioning of the spine. That's gonna put unilateral pressure on discs. I have a whole other video about how discs herniate. But basically, you don't want a hip hike and you don't want your head to be tilted and you don't want a shoulder hike. That indicates you need to go back to whichever phase of development you're missing, spend time there, and it will fix your posture, do the right stretching. Um, but remember, it's all about the nervous system. The nervous system is what determines muscle recruitment. So if you're stretching, 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 you get tight, 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 tight. Because you're not fixing the problem, you're fixing the symptom of the problem, and it's a very temporary fix. And it's good. You need to, you need to stretch. Like do that. Like there's nothing wrong with that. We I make a whole other video about that. But um, but but essentially, you're treating symptoms of lack of development. Okay, you have to develop in the proper pattern. So remember, before you ever sit up, you've already done these five months of development, and then you you push out your front two teeth. And these front two teeth correlate with like your kidneys, um, your bladder, stuff like that. So there's, a, there's the, this sequence, and then you have certain times that you should be pushing your teeth out and the teeth, they have to do with the meridian systems of the body. And you look at acupuncture, a lot of the acupuncture meridians end in teeth and it's like, it all develops. You're like a whole, you're like a body and not a muscle system. I know, you're like a whole body, I know. But um, with that being said, oh geez, we got a lot left now. So arm dominance, if you have the shrug, you can see how that's gonna affect shoulder blade uh, positioning, how that shoulder blades condition positioning is gonna move the spine because it's called the spinal engine for a reason. As your arm does something, the whole spine does something all the way down into the opposite foot. Now, with that being the case, if you're like this dude, that's not good because that means you are like this dude right here. You don't want that. Now, remember, um, that's going to be a problem because as your head side bends, your jaw, your bottom jaw tries, tries to stay level. So if I side bend, my jaw is going to trusion over here. If you're stuck in a scoliotic pattern because you can't actually load into your other leg because you don't know how, because uh, just so many reasons, the primary driver of which is that your nervous system did not develop those patterns or did, but you haven't used them because you, you have a sedentary lifestyle, you need to restore function to your nervous system. Now, to actually fix that rotation. And it's like, yeah, that can that can grow to the point of actually becoming a bony deformity uh, if you do it through puberty. And you can, it's a really simple test. If you round over, touch your toes and you have a rib hump in the rounded over position, I could have put that slide in here, but I didn't. I just thought of it now. Uh, if you have a rib hump on one side, then you got a structural scoliosis. If you don't have a rib hump, then you have what we call a functional scoliosis, meaning there's no, there's no bony deformity there. Um, if you have bone, bone deformity, you need a good therapist. So, and you're not going to get help from somebody who's charging $120 an hour. You're going to need somebody 
more of the caliber of some people that I know myself. Um, and there's going to be, it's going to be six months, a year before you really are done, honestly, but that's not everybody. It's a simple test to determine what's going on, but you can see if you're just always doing stuff with your right arm out here, you're going to have that shoulder hike on that side. That's going to give you the hip hike on the other side. And that's why rotation sports are they're they're, 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 they're fun. Baseball and tennis are a blast bowling. It's a blast, but you have to realize that your body you need to take care of it because it will easily break down. It really will. It, it, it requires constant upkeep. You will be exercising three times a week for the rest of your life if you ever work with me. Um, or you will just give way to the process of decay, which I don't recommend because it sucks. Because I've been there. I've been 270 pounds in my life playing computer games. When I was 17, when I was 16, I was 270 pounds. Don't do that. I was like five foot eight, bro. Don't do that. It's, that's why I do what I do now because my body was wrecked. I think at my worst, I had a 15 degree pelvis on the right, which means it was hiked up and tipped and a negative five degree pelvis on the left, which means it was the low pelvis and it was tucked under. That's how severe my scoliosis was after I broke my leg and didn't walk for three months. And that's why I'm here giving you this video right now, because I had to learn how all this works so I could get my life back. Because I was like 19, and I love sports, and yada, yada, yada. We can talk about it if you want to. But um, so rib cage stability, shoulder stability, and the spot. All right. We are just flying through this. Okay. So mm, say, the, say the word no. Mm, where, your, where, your, where your tongue goes when you go, mm, that's the rest position of your tongue. That's where it should be unless you are chewing or talking. Okay. That's where it should be. And the back of the tongue should actually be on the back of the palate and there should be a suction there and it should click when you pull your tongue down but we're not going to get into that we're just going to say hey push your tongue into that end spot while you're pulling your belly in and squeezing your pelvic floor that's the belly vacuum hold for 10 seconds that conditions this transversus abdominis muscle and in, in this in this closed chain loaded pattern you tuck your chin and you push your tongue remember we talked about those tongue muscles needing to be developed and strengthened right here where the c is okay and that's also going to activate all these mouth muscles here. That's really important. Remember, that happens from zero to three months. Okay. If you don't have that, you're boned. You, 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 you have a creep, man. So tongue posture is super important. While you're deadlifting, you should be pushing your tongue. While you're squatting, push your tongue. While you're <laughs> push your tongue to the roof of your mouth to provide proper length tension relationships to the neck, jaw, and shoulder so that this is fun. I love my job so that your head doesn't drop down and forward and your pelvis doesn't tip forward and you become so as dominant and quad dominant and you hyper extend your knees and you blow out. Have you ever seen those videos where the dude's doing like a really heavy leg press and then he just, he just relaxes and his knee hyper extends a big, Oh, it's hot. It's bad. But don't watch it. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about though, but that's because he had tension through his stabilizer system. His tongue was there, but then he relaxed. Boom. There goes his knee, his pelvis tipped, his low back hyper extended. And his knee locked out. Um, don't don't be you don't want that. That's how you get knee stuff is with that knee hyperextension stuff. So here we are. This is going to develop serratus. You got to push your tongue and tuck your chin a little bit. You should be able to feel this. If you want to feel your right serratus, tuck your chin to the right. Left serratus, tuck your chin to the left. Remember to shrug the shoulder if you're having a tough time with it, because if you have that pec minor tightness, it'll actually neurologically inhibit your ability to recruit this muscle, and that's when stretching. Uh, and manual therapy and things of that nature can really, really be important for the puzzle is when you have neurological inhibition, you got to get the blood back into that muscle that is inhibiting. So pec minor very commonly is going to inhibit your serratus anterior, which is this guy here, which is the platform for the neck and you have the thoracic outlet and all that stuff associated with it. So muy importante, get the blood into, let's see, the pec minor. If you can't tuck your chin, push your tongue and feel your serratus anterior while you do this exercise, pulling your belly in, kaggling. I have other videos on it. I have a whole PDF I can send out to you if you want to, if you want to check this out, but it is just, it just talks, it just, you know, walks you through these exercises, but it's not going to give you all this explanation, but mm, say, the, say the word no, wherever your tongue goes, when you go, nah, that's where it needs to be. Push it there. Yeah. You'll activate these muscles, these muscles, these muscles is good. Do that. And you might need to do that while you stretch too. Uh, while you like stretch your neck side flexion, rotation, levator, all that, all that good stuff. So um, moving right along, craniopelvic con connection. Let's see here, 20 degrees of forward head posture, 20 degree pelvic tilt member as the head comes forward, pelvis tips forward. You got to fix both. 
la, 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 upper cross is typically coupled with either a lower cross, sway back, or both, and often with a rotation in the system. So whenever you have a neck thing, usually there's a low back thing. It can present a couple different kind of ways, depending on how long it's been been around and your habits and things of that nature. But there usually are there's usually a thing on both sides. And a lot of times there's a rotation, which means a scoliosis in the system with arm dominance, leg dominance, whatever the case may be. What do you need? You need a proper corrective program for the head and the pelvis. Okay, now you can say, hey man, I've got this forehead posture and you can do it a couple of ways. You can correct this a couple of ways. So you can rebuild systematically or you can target specific postural syndromes. So say you don't have acute pain and you're just like, man, my posture's funky and I have like chronic pain, but it's not like horrible because I'm like 25 right now, but it's going to get worse. I'm afraid I'm it's going to like lead to surgery. You can do that with a specific postural program. We could, we could do that. And that, that's like a month long. Um, and the workouts are going to take a lot longer if you do that route, because it's a big, long workout three times a week, um, three to four times a week, depending on which one you're on. But uh, basically, the typical presentation or the typical formula that we would follow we would need to correct uh, the low back and the gravity line. So sway back, flat back. Then we would need to do the neck, which is the upper cross. And then we would need to fix the lower cross, which is like tight hip flexors and psoas dominance and all that. And then you would get a program that targets the upper and lower cross at the same time. So each one of these phases here would take about a month, about a month, just as you're, just as it'll take a month max. I'll put it to you that way. Um, so that's one, two, three, four months, okay? Um, if you want to do postural syndrome correction, if you want to say, I'm going to take it, I'm going to go this postural syndrome, this postural syndrome, yada, yada. Now, if you're in acute pain, like you're like, man, I threw out my back. All right, well, let's, let's take a different approach to you. Your body can't take the beating that's going to occur here with this, with these programs, with those, with those specific programs, because they're getting, there's going to be some inflammation involved with that. So if you're already acutely in a, in a spot where you're in pain, we don't want to go that route. So we want to rebuild you systematically if you are in acute pain, if you have your herniated disc, if your knee is all lit up. So the first thing you do there is you restore the deep core. Uh, then you're going to restore sling system function, so neurological connection to the sling systems. Then you're going to build strength with those sling systems. And then you're going to build force generation on top of those sling systems. Okay, each workout takes less time, but in general, you're going to work out more frequently. So you may have like the first week of your, you know, your workout, maybe 15 minutes of exercise, but for five days in a row and then two days off. And then the next week, it may be like, like four days at 20 minutes. And then it might be, you know, three days at 30 minutes versus these workouts. It's going to be an hour, three to four times a week. OK, um, so it just kind of depends on your schedule, where you are with your injury, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to get there in about four months regardless. Unless you have a menstrual cycle, we have to respect that because when the uterus swells, it'll shut down the deep core and then we can't really do anything. That's why you get cramps and you get low back pain and stuff, leg pain. That's, that's your lumbar. It's actually falling out of place. Uh, you can get your migraines can get worse. It, th that's why it's because it shuts that uterus swelling shuts down the deep abdominal wall because the deep abdominal wall compresses and lifts the organs. Inflamed organs do not like compression. They want to swell they don't like to be squeezed, okay? So if you have, say you have a crappy diet, you drink too much, say you take a bunch of medical drugs that are GI inflammatory, say you eat just a bunch of crap, you're gonna inflame your organs and it will shut down your deep abdominal wall. So there is other things to look at. We need to look, we need to check our bases at diet and lifestyle and say, hey man, we gotta clean up that crap that you're eating. You, you, you can drink, but like, you gotta drink your water. <laughs> like you gotta give your body a chance to heal, man. Um, so, so it is, it's, a, it's, it's a very comprehensive approach and it works. Um, but if you want your physical body to be restored, you must go through the process necessary to create a healthy and a functional human with attention to some other details, which I just briefly mentioned there. Um, so remember this developmental process occurs for every functional human. Okay. If you have postural problems, if you have pain problems, you need to go back and redevelop whatever it is that you have a deficit in and then continue through the progression. Because if you have a problem here, you've got a problem in all of this. You got a problem here, you got a problem in all this, you got a problem here, all this, right? So you got to go back. Every infant has to go through this developmental process to have a functional musculoskeletal system and organ system, by the way. Because remember, the deep core holds the organs in place 
uh, reference to a swollen uterus or a swollen digestive organ or like a liver or something. So um, your next steps, send me a message, schedule a call with me. Uh, if you're not a good fit, I'll point you in the right direction. I got a lot of resources I can give you to um, that, uh, that's kind of based on your situation. So we'll kind of talk about everything for you, look at your options and then point you in the right direction. If you are a good fit and I can't help you, then I will pitch you. So be ready for that. <laughs> um, are you sure it will work for me? Based on my track record, based on client success, more than likely, yes, it will. Here's some case histories. Uh, so Steve, age 50, Steve had surgery on his Achilles before meeting me. Uh, he completed all his PT work. Uh, after his PT work had been completed, he was still having low back pain. Uh, and he was having to see a chiropractor every week to keep the back pain away. Um, and he'd been doing that for a while. <laughs> like, I don't remember how long because he's an older client, but um, he'd been doing that for a while. Uh, so the assessment showed TBA wasn't functioning, multifidus wasn't functioning. So he had a deep core issue, which is that zero to three month problem. Okay. Now remember, the whole process of, co of correction typically takes about four months because we can target it all and get it where it needs to go. Um, typically, if you're really screwed up, you got a lot of scar tissue. And again, that kind of goes with, with attention to some other details. You might be looking more like six, eight months, but um, let's see here. Now, uh, he, he presented with deep core issue, um, postural disorder. He had a layered syndrome. So he had the sway back with an upper cross. And then once you unwind the sway back, you see the lower cross. And, you know, so he had a very, very layered syndrome and they're hard to fix. Layered syndromes are hard to fix. A lot of therapists can't fix them. I've unwound a number of layered syndromes in my career. So yeah, <laughs> but currently, uh, Steve hasn't been to the chiropractor in years and is playing some very, very good golf. Um, so be like Steve. Okay, Christy, A65. Christy showed up in my office with three fusion surgeries. I used to only work in person. Now I only work online. I do a couple house calls here and there, but I only do online now. Um, one of which had to be redone. She was fused from L4 to S2. Assessment showed missing deep core function, TBA multifidus, as well as fluctuating postural presentation. So she would actually, I would measure her every workout for like a month or two. And she would flip flop. She would go sway back one day, um, uh, lo uh, lower cross the next day. And we would literally have to change her program day to day based on her presentation. Um, but within two months, she had pain-free status and she returned to work as a secretary. And that was huge. That was, that was huge for her. That was a big win. Um, so Jenny, because she was she was she was not having a good time. Jenny, age thirty eight, she came in with migraines. She worked with a neurologist. She'd done chiropractic and she'd done her medicine, and uh, it wasn't working. So she was trying something else. And I was like, "Hey, come check it out. Uh, I can help you." Um, so assessment showed again missing deep core function, TBA multifidus, as well as postural distortion. She presented with a kyphoglordosis, uh, which is that upper cross lower cross thing. Uh, within days, the migraines went away. Like after our first session like her migraine went away and then she did her routine at home. She did her stretches and she kept them away. Um, so be like Jenny, come to me with a problem and restore your quality of life. Smiley face. Okay. Um, so Sam, age 28, ex college decathlete, and he was personal trainer, very successful personal trainer, actually. Uh, he came to me with five bulging discs in his low back, two in his neck. A uh, surgeon said not to bother with PT because nobody could help. Um, I told him it'd be the biggest mistake of his life if he listened to that guy. Um, so, but I do agree with him to some degree because not many people could have helped him. Uh, like the typical system wouldn't have helped him. Um, I, I do believe that. So I, I am with a surge on that. But after 16 weeks of progressed rehab, um, Sam was power cleaning 275 pounds without pain and restored him to full function. He actually went on to coach strength and conditioning for a local high school. And yeah. He's having a good, good old time nowadays, from what I understand. I haven't heard any complaints, so I think he's still good. Um, so assessment showed missing deep core function, TVA multifidus again, and postural distortion. He presented with a flat back posture. Uh, so be like Sam, come in without hope and leave restored. Yeah, I made that up myself. Thank you. Victory sip. Okay, Shane. Oh, man, Shane. Ex-triathlete. Fused at L6 S1. So he actually had an extra lumbar vertebrae. So that was cool. Uh, primary complaint, a uh, sharp sciatica, chronic low back pain, prior PT surgery had helped, but it came back. Um, so 
Assessment showed, again, deep core function problem, TVA function was not there, multifidus function was missing. And he presented with the typical runner's posture, which is the sway back posture. It's also stage three adrenal fatigue posture. So that's another talk, but 20 week progression, uh, left Shane doing kettlebell split snatches without pain. And those are pretty cool. So he was, yeah, he's happy about that. Definitely happy about that. Um, so Patricia, geez, this is a lot of, this is a long presentation. I hope this is recording. I, I think that it is. Okay, so Patricia came in after a diastasis recti surgery and she had worked with other practitioners on her deep core and stuff and it didn't didn't help uh, because of reasons that I won't get into because I'm not going to badmouth anybody, but uh, complaints of chronic neck pain and SI joint pain, which is par for the course, par for the course, assessment showed missing deep core function, TVA multivitis, as well as scoliosis and sway back postural patterns. Swix, we put her on the sway back, she wasn't any like really sharp acute pain. Uh, so we just tossed her on a sway back postural program. Um, and she wanted to keep going because she felt better. She wanted to be actually restored to athletic status. Um, so we did that for about six weeks. And then we put her on some other programs, some functional strength programs. And yes, yeah, so currently she's released without pain and she is skiing down the mountain at 100%. Oh my gosh, another. Okay, Nicole, age 27, came in with complaints of right knee pain. She had a surgical remover of a tumor and a runner's knee diagnosis. She was told by a surgeon there was nothing that they could do except wait for another surgery on her knee. Uh, she couldn't ride horses without pain. Uh, assessment showed, again, I don't know if you get it now, usually the thing that people are dealing with is deep core problems and PT doesn't usually fix that. They, they kind of skip over that zero to three month phase of development. Some are good, some do it. Um, many do not. And it's what basically everybody needs. So um, at least everybody who's struggling, that's what they need. I'll put it to you that way. Um, so assessment showed missing deep core function, TBA multifidus and postural distortion. She had a layered syndrome. So that was fun. Uh, she's currently released, no knee pain. She's riding horses again, and she's having a good time. Be like Nicole. Uh, so these are real people with real results. If you want to speak to any of these people, you can like, they're real people. Like if you wanted to talk to them on the phone, I could be like, hey, will you talk to this person? And they would tell you their story. Probably. They, they like me, I think. So the point is people who need my help, they have one specific common link and that is missing deep core function, okay? Uh, PT that doesn't check TBA and multifidus prior to moving into strengthening exercises, they leave clients with partial results. Um, cracking a spine without checking and restoring deep core leads to short-term relief, okay? Um, massaging tight muscles without testing and restoring deep core leads to the muscle tightening back up, okay? So the deep core, it's the foundation of stability. It holds everything together so you can generate and absorb forces without pain. The reason the muscle is tight is because that system isn't functioning. The reason your joints are inflamed because they're not being oriented and stabilized so you can load them in a centrated fashion. The reason you have migraines and vertigo and pain and organ issues and hormonal imbalances is because the deep core is developed at age zero to three months old and it is the requisite foundation for your body to properly function. So there's the deep core spiel. Um, remember, deep core is 20% of the puzzle. Do not forget that. Pelvic floor, spinal muscles, your neck muscles, your tongue muscles, that happens here, zero to three months. You got all the rest of this that you have to take care of, okay? So that is the presentation on neck stuff. And as you can see, it's about much more than neck stuff. So hope you learned something. Uh, shoot me a message if you have any questions, if you want to learn more. Uh, yeah. Have a great day.